this is Stuart's Random Tech and Media and as you may have known from my other videos maybe you haven't known I had some really bad luck with the Rodecaster Pro 2 maybe it's not bad luck with the smart pads not working properly so this is my third and hopefully final replacement for this unit. I have one more on the way that's gonna be replaced by my local supplier and I don't know if it's they're gonna send me one that doesn't have defective smart pads or not but as you can see I can hit one pad and it triggers the one beside it and on really bad days just hitting the table, not today however, just hitting the table triggers the applause. So this is actually the second one and I'm going to be tearing it down today uh, to see what is going on. They told me up front they don't want it back but dispose of it, don't let it get out in the market or something like that. I don't know what they were talking about. So. I'm going to tear it down. Now the third one I have has exactly the same issue except it's these two pads here, the ch uh, crickets and the chimes that are having issues. This one just has one pad that has the issue. And I've tried all kinds of things to sort it out already. So anyways, we're going to tear this thing down and see what's inside and maybe even do something to resolve the pad. I don't, I don't have too many hopes, but we're going to look inside anyways and find out, so stay tuned. So the first thing we're going to do is see how to get into this thing. And I have no idea where the screws are on this thing. I'm assuming they might be under the pads. So let's take apart one of the pads and see what's underneath all right so we're in luck here the screws are underneath here and they look like they're torques so let's pull all these pads off here with my handy dandy screwdriver try not to damage the pads although they did tell me to throw it away so I don't see how this could get any poss possibly any worse and interestingly enough this is interesting I don't know if you can see which you probably can't but it looks like someone's already been in here let me see if I can zoom in so you can see So you should be able to see it now, but here you see little scratch marks. I've never been in this thing before. So this this is suspicious in itself. What's going on here? Okay, let's continue our journey. Pretty sure this is not from my screwdriver. That's Showing these scratches here. Okay. This one. Okay, well, maybe it was me. Although I. Okay. Although, I don't recall doing that side, but anyways. Alright, let's find a suitable screwdriver. We got a torque here. Let's see if this is the right size. Nope. Next one up. Okay, I think I got it. It's a tiny bit loose. Let's just try this one here. No. Right, so it's this one. 
All right, that's screw number one off to the side. Screw number two off to the side. Three. Coming up quite easily, actually. Oh, this these back ones are longer. Okay. Well, we can see see that these are much longer. Okay, off to the side with that one. Now, <laughs> I don't think it's going to just come apart. Although I kind of hoped it would, but. Oh, okay. It's coming apart rather easily, actually. Okay, let me find a little something to pry this open with. All right, so we'll just use a screwdriver. At this point, I don't think it matters. Okay, it's actually coming apart quite easily. A lot easier than I expected. Whoa, that was deceptively easy. Okay, here we go. First time, let's see what's inside here. Holy jeez. So this bottom plate is completely isolated whatsoever from everything else, okay? So let's put that off to the side. And so this will be facing this way. Sorry, this is the top, okay. So that back under there. So what do we have in here? Okay, so we have all the faders. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six faders. Okay, there's these strips. These feel kind of like strips to prevent bumping, I suppose. And then the pads are over here. It says, look here. I'll try to zoom in on that. It says look here top, okay. So let's move around the board a bit more here. Uh we have some AM Logic A11 3D chips quad core. So that's the main processor. Uh, we have what looks like a, can't quite read it, 4C. It says 4C on two of the chips here. Okay, so the this chip here is a 4C. F six zero Charlie one alpha zero 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 four Mary seven nine R and the other four C chip here the square one is a maybe I can so this one is F E M D N N zero zero eight G like George dash zero eight A three nine. All right. Okay. So for you really technical people out there, those are the chips they're using for the the USB controller, main processor, and well, basically that's the whole board right there. Is basically here. This is the the soundboard. Um, now, it says it has Apex 
processors or processing I should say and I wonder if it's underneath here it might be underneath this here uh, I don't know but anyways our issue today is not with the control board which seems to be functioning not too badly it is with the pads however this is interesting this is not something you want to see from the factory if you look closely see if I can so if you look if I look closely here you'll see it almost looks like heat damage or water damage around the solder joints now it's not the end of the world I wonder if I can just see if that comes off it's almost like it's I think it might actually be flux that's left over. Let's see if it comes off or not. It's sort of... Sort of coming off, so it's probably not a big deal. But just for your own information. But anyways, let's get to the pads itself. Um... I don't want to destroy this thing. That's for sure. I want to be as careful as I can. Okay, so let's remove... This almost looks like a... This is for the Wi-Fi. Or this is for Bluetooth or the Wi-Fi. I'm not sure which one is for which here. So this one says... Okay, this one's here. It's for the Wi-Fi antenna, as you can see. This one here is for Bluetooth, it's marked on the circuit board, and this one is for, I don't know what this antenna is for. We'll find out eventually, I suppose. But anyways, to get these pads out, what it looks like I have to do is disassemble the whole thing, from what I gather. Because we have these little we have these little notches here that I have to press in to take the whole board out to get at the the pads. And not, nothing here seems to be moving around. So I guess the whole board's going to come out. Okay, well, let's take out the whole board. So we'll start with... I guess we'll start by taking the antenna... We'll start by taking the antenna off here. So this is Bluetooth. Okay. And we'll just move that off to the side. Alright. And then this one... Okay, so this is a over here. I'll take this little ribbon cable out here very carefully not to damage it. it says underneath here faders board, all right. So, anyway, so I guess this ribbon goes all the way back to the faders. And then, okay, so I need a different size of torque. Let's try this one here. Oh, that's not torque. Uh, nope. I want this size here. Okay, this one works. Okay, so I'll put these screws off the side over here. And these ones are quite long as well. As you can see. Okay, 
that frees up the board a little bit. And okay, so there's two little tabs here. Now I'm assuming this power button's gonna be a pain in the butt to it's gonna probably fall apart here. There's this plastic piece under here too. Now this I don't see any other screws, it should be coming up or out. Let's take this other antenna off for the, oh, it says under here UF, UFL cable, okay. Take that little guy off here very carefully. Doesn't want to come off. There we go. Okay, so that got that antenna cable off, and this is sort of moving but I guess I have to take the ribbons ribbons off all right I don't like taking these ribbons off especially these really fine ones okay well I can take that off this piece here I'm kind of curious to know if just pulling this plate up is enough to release the pressure on the pads. And if that's the case, I might be able to slide it back down without having to take the whole thing apart. And hopefully that will relieve, relieve enough of the pressure on the pads itself. So I'm going to put this back down. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave it off. What I'm going to do is just leave this slightly off, this pad. And I guess I'll just reconnect this. Actually, I don't really need the Wi-Fi connected right now, the antenna anyways. So what I'm going to do is just flip this over I think while it's in this state and then take that out of there and put this out of the way for a second I'm just gonna gent put it very gently down okay so the pads are out okay they're out of the socket so I'm gonna plug it in yes I am plugging this in And I want to see if the behavior of the pads changes at all before I go any further. So let's turn it on. And we're waiting for it to boot up. And this thing takes forever to boot up. It's like booting up a computer. Looks like it might be getting stuck on that last little tiny bar. I wonder if it has some sort of sensor in here to, to tell if the cover is off. Of course, wouldn't it just come up with an error right away? I don't know. Doesn't look like it wants to start up. It should start up by now. Okay, let's unplug it. Maybe I have to partially reassemble it so let's put this back on put the antenna cable back on here or the UFL cable whatever that does Come on, back on there. It's being stubborn. There we go. I might as well put the Wi Fi back on too since I'm here. All right, flip it over and 
plug it in. Let's see what happens. Got to that last little bit again. And it doesn't seem to be going any further. Okay. We'll give it another 30 seconds just in case. Yeah, no, it's not going to go, I don't think. All right. Well, since we're... Now, I can't see why having the cover on... I don't see any sensors anywhere that would suggest that this thing would know that it was... Oh, well, I took the fader boards off. That's why. That's probably why it's not starting up. Okay, let's put the fader board back in. Okay. Putting these back in. Because... Let's go secure the board a bit. Y'all must be having fun watching me struggle to get a stupid ribbon cable in, which should be easy, which not. I wonder if I can get this connector to come out a bit more. Oh my goodness, this thing is terrible. Oh great, now I'm not going to be able to get this little plastic piece back in. Maybe at least the ribbon will go back in better. Okay, so that was the issue. This little piece wasn't out far enough. This little plastic piece. Okay, so I got you back in. I don't know how I'm going to get this. Oh, jeez. Little plastic pieces. Usually on these connectors, they have a little stopper to prevent it from coming out all together, but not this one. I'm not putting this plastic piece back in for the time being. I don't need it for testing, but I do want to keep it safe here off to the side. Oh, okay. Well, let's see if this thing will turn on. Now the ribbon cable's back in. I gotta be very careful that cable wants to come out. Turn on. It doesn't want to boot up still. Um, so I don't know if there's some protection thing on these circuits or something. I'm not sure. So what I'm going to try to do is just put this scale back in here. This board does not want to go back down. What's going on here? Oh, there we go. I just need to press a little harder. Okay, let's put the, so the cover has some metal in it, 
Well, it's possible it's a safety mechanism that's preventing it from starting up, but I don't see why it would go all the way, almost all the way, and then not go any further. But just put the and there's nothing metal in the screw hole, so there's definitely not a sensor there. So let's just. Click that sort of into place. Okay, that went back together easily enough. Let's try it again. Okay, I'll let it set for five minutes or so and see if it finishes starting up. All right, so I still can't get it to boot up. So I'm gonna leave it at that for this episode so this is part one and this is probably going to be a multi-part episode two and three i'm i'm guessing um as i tear this thing down and put it back together and hopefully it's working in the end uh so yeah thank you for joining me today and i hope next week to release the second part of this video um with a further tear down and reassembly